the nickel nickel nine. Yeah. Uh, five nine J. Uh, uh, let me speak my mind up. Uh, uh, this is me keeping it real. Uh huh. Keeping it one hundred. Let's go. Yeah. Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. I want to talk to you guys about a crazy prison policy, right? It's a policy that's more conducted and carried out on the SNY. And who better than talk about SNY than somebody like me that's, you know, been on social media for quite some time. I've shared a lot of prison experiences about SNY. I haven't even gave you all the details about SNY, a lot of the prison stories from SNY. But, you know, at least I was upfront and honest about it. But you got to remember, in this prison genre um, that's going on all over YouTube, I'm going to make a video about it. I think prison and uh, some of the content creators that, you know, come on in social media, there's one thing that goes together that's kind of making, you know, the, the idea of prison channels and talking about prison topics, you know, it kind of makes it, like, irrelevant now. I Me mean, personally, it's starting to become a lot more irrelevant only because, you know, I, like I said, I did my best to, to relay the message to the youth. I've been thinking about changing my uh, content. I'm thinking about it every day. When I make the decision, I will. So that way I can pull away from this genre, broaden my horizon, and not be connected to some of the inflated egos that you're going to see across social media. Because now everybody's been to prison. Now everybody has a prison story. Now everybody makes up prison stories. But I want to tell you about this personal policy that... I personally seen, I personally done. I have my paperwork, my 128 G's. I got all my write-ups from every fight that I've ever got into in prison. And a lot of them have to do with this policy. It happens on the main line per se, but it's different. Like I guess it's interpreted different when it comes to the main line, right? So you owe somebody money on the main line. I mean, you got a certain amount of time. Southsiders got three weeks to pay. Northerners got 14 days to pay. I'm not sure about the blacks. I'm not sure about the whites. But when it comes to mainline, there's a little bit more diplomacy there. You can go about it as many ways as you possibly can before you finally say, you know what? I'm going to tell your big homies that you owe me this amount of money and uh, I'll let them deal with you because obviously I can't. Sometimes, you know, it might start off with JPays, green dots, uh, whatever kind of money transfers that they have. That don't work. All right, man, just give me 50 canteen this month. Give me 50 canteen this month. And if that doesn't work out, you know, there's avenues and um, options when it comes to paying your debt in prison that a lot of people would really go to that extent of finding out or trying to negotiate before they say, you know what, I'm going to tell your people and have your people stab you to death all over prison. It's still called, uh, if that was to happen and it reaches that point, you know, a lot of group segments understand like, all right, if I tell his big homies and his homies stab him, I'm not getting paid. So they always try to avoid that aspect and those avenues as long as possible because people want to get paid in prison. It's a money economy. It's one prison economy that's so big, you're making money off anything and everything, even bologna and cheese if you're stealing it from the kitchen. So people want to get paid. So if, you ha if they have to go to an extended time, your big homies that you ain't paying nothing, they're leaving it up into the hands of your people to go about it and making sure you get paid. Now, oftentimes, that's all they want from your people is, hey, man, can you... Your homie owes me like 300 bucks. He's been, he's been stalling, bro. He's been dragging it. Can I get paid? All they want is to get paid. It's your own people that'll be the first ones to be like, hey, you owe that food money for how long? And you haven't paid? I seen you go to the store. Oh, but you owe that food too? After the fact, you bought some more dope, and but you already owed him prior? All right, blast them. And a lot of careers are being lost. A lot of the SNY yards are being filled. A lot of people have died at the hands of their own people because even their own people as educated as everybody wants to portray themselves to be coming out of prison or being in prison all these gang leaderships that hold themselves in a high regard of leadership positions have no leadership skills have no diplomacy skills have no education to where they can find other solutions and other options to resolve matters and resolve the issues because there's not that many issues i mean not that many options available in prison to go about it. Everything's a monetary game. You, your big homie might be like, all right, I'll pay your debt so that way I ain't got to blast you, but I'll triple it up. So now you owe that dude 300, I'll take a thousand. You can pay me in increments. So now you can deal with me and I can blast you for later reasons, for bigger reasons, for a bigger issue, for a reason that I've been looking for anyways to get rid of you in the first place. 
The policy is called hands laid dead space. So anytime on the main line, you bring it up to some other group segment and they blast them, I ain't got to pay you. That man owed you money. You brought it to my attention. You forced my hand. You caused me to investigate my own people. So now I blasted them for you to show you that there's lines of respect and there's levels of respect, there's levels of communication. And then we're not trying to disturb the peace and the respect level that exists on the yard because the moment you bring it to my attention, it becomes my responsibility. So however I conduct it, go about it and carry it out is entirely up to me because you put it on my desk, on my table, and this is about my people. And then a lot of people get mad. It's like, damn fool. Like some people will eventually get mad and be like, hey bro, I didn't ask you to blast them. I just asked you to make them pay me. So now that you blasted them and I lost three, four hundred dollars, hey, who's gonna pay me? Then you'll see a lot of these prison organizations, these prison leaderships on the mainland be like, I ain't paying you a damn thing. I just killed this fool. I just spilled this kid's blood. I didn't have my people stab this fool over 50 some times because you complained about your money, because you did bad business with a bad person. That's how we took care of it. I ain't paying you nothing. There's some people that will approach you and really, really just want their money because they have no money. So whatever money they accumulate in jail and able to obtain, it means a lot to them. But that's the the harshest policy that's going on in prison is hands laid, debts paid. On the main line, like I said, nobody wants to fork over money. There's been a lot of occasions, I've seen a lot of occasions where you know your people will come together, put together some money, and you know get you out of debt but then you're gonna be in disregard you're gonna be in trouble you're gonna have to go stab somebody kill somebody your people are gonna look at you in a different fashion you might owe your people even 10 times more money but hey they they got you out of a debt because you know a black and a northerner ain't gonna blast no southerner for owing money they're gonna go about it you know the diplomatic way because they know if they do that for one, they're not going to get paid. Two, it's going to cause a big internal war that's going on in the prison society. It's going to last very long. And then a lot more people are going to get killed because people are going to get mad that their business got interrupted because these two men couldn't conduct proper business with one another. And they couldn't be men and hash it out and negotiate on different terms. Or just some people are just straight dirtbags and don't know. They, they know they can't pay and they, they choose to get in debt anyways. And then they want to cry about it that they're getting stabbed by their own homies. So it's called hands laid, debts paid. That's how it's done on the main line. But when you go to SNY, it's probably one of the most craziest policies and dangerous policies on the SNY. And this is coming from me that's actually an SNY inmate. You know, I've been honest about SNY. Um, I never came on to YouTube denying it or, you know, claiming that I've never been on there and, and then tell so many stories about SNY. No. I've been very blunt, very open with SNY politics, and they are scandalous. They are very scandalous. And this is one of the scandalous ones because, because a lot of the SNYs um, have gangs that operate under different policies. They try to mimic and emulate the same mainline gangs that they walked away from. We all did it. But we adopt the same policies and procedures only to an extent to fit our own prison gang, but nobody else's. I'll give you an example. Two fivers and riders sell dope to each other all day. No other riders know that, you know, you sell dope to a two fiver, man, you got a 40% chance you're gonna get paid. Hopefully you do get paid, but more likely it's gonna escalate to war. The Zapatistas sell dope to the two fivers knowing damn well the same thing. I, I've, it's been a rare occasion that I've ever seen a two fiver sell dope to a rider or a sabatista. They don't. They'll just spread it amongst each other and get high and then go broke again. They don't care. A zip of a zip of black that shows up in a two fiver faction, like ninety percent of that sack is just getting slammed. They're not. They're, they're probably gonna make a couple canteen bags and that's about it. They don't really make money like that. It's very rare I've made a two fiver that was balling out of control because he didn't get high and he sold all his dope. No, that. They feed each other's veins left and right, and be strong out left and right. But they got the power and the numbers to do that. There's been two yards on the SNY where all the SNY gangs, Sabatistas, Riders, Independent Riders, Green Lighters, uh, BBCs will have a policy like they don't do business with two fivers. They won't sell the two fivers because they know it's just gonna end up in escalating into a gang war. The two fivers are the ones that are known for the hands laid debt pay policy now. If I was to go up to a, a group of two fivers, whether it's uh, the Malditos, Fuerza Mexica, um, Heavy Hitters, 
uh, the Re Grim Reapers. You know, they're all in subsections. I can go up to any one of those Ramflas and be like, hey, bro, your homie owes me like 800 bucks. It's been like three months since he paid me. He barely gave me $100, bro. Like, it's like, what, what are we going to do about that? They'll go ask him straight up. Hey, you owe this food money? Yeah. All right. It's only if that two fiver is like highly influential. He has a lot of say so in the two five faction when it comes to that prison and other prisons. Where they might drag it out, might find different resolutions, and a lot of two fivers will raise their hand, be like, "Hey, fool, uh, I'll give you a couple of this. I can give you this. Hey, fool, I'm finna hit some dope. I'm gonna get like a couple of quarters. I can give you like two this weekend to keep you cool." You know, there's man, they come up with so many. A lot of people on the SNY come up with so many excuses and options that most of the time never work out, and people believe it because people don't want to go to war. Because, like I said, SNY is. Now, they're stabbing each other left and right now. This is no different from the main line. They'll do that. But say if this is a 2 fiver that he's just there, he's just a number, he's just a guy with a jersey, and he's just a regular 2 fiver nobody really cares too much about him. Nobody's heard about him. He hasn't put in a lot of work. He's just there, you know, as dead weight or just for extra numbers. Dude, they wouldn't even advise us. They won't even come up to no SNY gangs that brought up these uh, diplomatic situations and be like, hey, bro, well, look, we're going to blast them. We'll just see it on the yard and these like five, two fivers jumping his fool, slicing his face, stabbing him. We're kind of wondering what the hell's going on. And then the two fivers after yard will come up to us and be like, hey, fool, we took care of that. You know, and we already know the policy. Hands laid, debts paid. Two fivers will not be the kind of type of faction that will pay their homies debts. Force their homies to pay their homies debts. Force their homies to pay their own debts. But they have a strong mentality that they have the numbers, they have the powers, and they have the ability to smack one of their own. Because a busload of ex-Southerners are going to come, and they're going to have like 10, 15 more members by the next busload. I promise you this. Every time you're at a facility on an SNY yard, and a bus comes to an SNY yard... There's about five two fivers on that bus, and there's about maybe five or seven potential two fivers to become two fivers on that bus. Every chance. Like I said, in Tehachapi, there were 120 deep. 120 deep on A yard. And they took up that whole yard. It was hard to even get on the basketball court and get on the handball court because they were so deep. They were just in the middle of the basketball court. They would walk around the basketball court. They would take up a lot of the area because they were deep in numbers. Riders. Independent riders, Zapatistas, they all do the same thing. They don't do it to the extent the two fivers will do it. Oftentimes, when a rider owes money, uh, Snoop had a policy where you had 18 days to take care of it. So in 18 days, on that 18 day, they're going to bring it up at the or, you know rider committee, at the Playboy committee, and they're going to be like, hey, did you pay yet? Why haven't you paid it? Before they smack one of their own, They'll bring it up to the two fivers or whoever brought up the situation like, hey, we gave this for 18 days. That was the policy. Within that 18 days, you and him were supposed to work it out. We're going to smack them. Usually we tell the group segments because if they're like, yeah, smack them then, then obviously he's going to get smacked. But if the dude really wants to get paid and he doesn't want the dude to get smacked, he can easily give the riders the option. Like, nah, you ain't got to do all that, bro. Uh, how about this? Let's try this. How about this? Let's do that. Because within that 18 days... That rider has 18 days to pay this man however he needs to pay him. But within that 18 days, you'll be surprised how many riders will raise their hands and be like, hey, fool, I can come through with like 20. He can come through with like 20. He can come through with like 20. But you're going to owe us, bro. You're going to give it back to us. I don't care if you just make some pruno, you make some white lightning, you give me all your syrups and sugar packs for the next three months. We'll figure it out because we really don't want to blast one of our own. But if we have to, we'll figure it out. But... In that 18 days, dude didn't pay. And that dude says, go ahead and smack him when he ain't tripping. Because we're going to throw that option into somebody's face. Like, yeah, he didn't pay you, bro. We're going to blast him, bro. Don't even trip. We'll take care of it. Just to see what they'll say. And if they were, they agree to it and they don't really care, all right, then, then we don't care either about your money either. So once we smack him, don't bring it up again that somebody else owes you or the riders owe you money because then we're just going to jump you off the yard. So the hands laid debt, the pay policy is allowed a lot of people to be dirt, continuously be dirt bags on the SNY because in reality, it works both ways. I can smack you because you owed money and you didn't pay, or I can smack you because I owe you money and I refuse to pay. When that happens, riders oftentimes 50 50, 
they'll deal with the issue if they find out about it. Some yards, there's a lot of yards that are have riders, but they'll just look at it like, oh, we kicked it off, bro. We, we, we went at it. We went to war. We were bored. You know, we smacked a couple of two fivers. We smacked a couple of IRs. We smacked a couple of Sabatisas. We, you know, we had a great time. Oh, well, hands laid, debts paid. We ain't got to worry about that debt no more. But on a lot of the certified yards where they actually hold, you know, rider education and rider policies and rider ideologies in a high regard, if they find out like, hey, fool, you, you instigated the situation and you had us jump this fool, but in reality, you owed him money and decided to go about it a different way, jeopardize a couple of homies programs because you didn't want to pay this dude. Like, I said, we're not going for that. We're going to smack you. And usually, oftentimes, it'll come to light. Whatever it is in the dark comes to light on the SNY. People talk, people know information, word spreads like wildfire on the SNY. So you could do it in both ways. You can jump somebody because they owe somebody and call it clear, call it a debt-free, you know, just a debt-free environment. Like, I don't owe you nothing, no. The, the riders don't owe you nothing. The Zapatistas don't owe you nothing. The two fivers don't owe you nothing because they took care of business. But it also, you can reverse the policy. And it's not even frowned upon. We'll talk about it. I'd be like, damn, fool, them two fivers jumped that fool. And they, like, 10 of them owed that fool, like, 200 bucks. So 10 of them owed that dude 200 bucks. Pretty much, they were in debt $2,000. They figured, one man, why pay him $2,000 when we could just maul this dude and, and chop his face up, beat him up hella bad, send him on his way. They come back to the yard in, what, six to eight months. That's how I was working back then. Now you can just, you know, slice somebody and go back to the yard. So they'd be gone for six, eight months. They get transferred to different facilities. Hell, they might even get dropped off at a different facility that they want to be in. Or they can come back in eight months with all these new policies, these new homies' names, these new rosters, these new updates, these new people they got to kill. And it's pretty much works in their favor. It works in their operations because now the administration put them in at SEG, transfer them to these other facilities in the hole. They accumulated all this information Brought it back. Now they got more policies and more politics to get involved in and promote all over the SNY yards. So it kind of works in their favor. That's what they like to do. But it also, you know, I can honestly say, you know, for a long time, I defended SNYs. I tried my best to at least kind of alleviate the, the dirtbag nonsense and the dropout nonsense. And, you know, people have all these dumb assumptions automatically that never been in SNY or act like they were on really on the SNY or act like they were really involved in the SNY or deny being on the SNY, but try to interpret it on social media. I I defended it for a very long time, but the truth is, you know, a lot of people go over there for, with scandalous ways and scandalous dealings, and then we continue those scandalous dealings, but we justify them that, you know, this is SNY, it's a little bit different. Of course it is different. It's SNY yards. We're always going to be on the SNY yard justifying our actions and not thinking that they're dirtbag moves. But in reality, that's a dirtbag move. That's a dirtbag policy. Because a lot of people are just trying to make a living, trying to earn a living, trying to make a little bit of money so they ain't got to ask their family for too much money. And there's other people that just choose to feed their veins and feed their arms and feed their egos. And it gets in the way of business because you don't know who to trust on the SNY to do business with. And a lot of people that are non-affiliates that don't gangbang are so afraid to do business with SNY gangs because, I mean, you got a 50-50 chance of getting paid or getting smashed. Getting paid or getting smashed. A dude wants to make three cups of white lightning, sell them, make, well, you can sell each cup for like 40, 50 bucks, depending on potent, the potency of it. That's $150. He gets all that in store, bro, he's eating good for like two months. He ain't got to ask his baby mama or his mama for nothing. But he sells those cups, those dude gets drunk, and then three weeks later, he's like, hey, where's my money at? I'm paying you a damn thing, bro. You got a problem? Oh, you do got a problem? I'm going to smash you for it. And, you know, it's very unfortunate. There's some people that just utilize the prison hustle. There's so many prison hustles, and they utilize that just to get by in prison. There's always going to be a group of people that are going to take advantage of that. And then when it comes to SNY gangs, like I said, inflated egos. Not the egos you see on YouTube. I'm talking about inflated egos of a lot of men that worked for big homies, used to be big homies, used to be affiliates, used to be camaradas or ensoles or whatever the case may be when it comes to the whites. You know, they don't abandon those mentalities and they get involved in SNY gangs and these SNY gangs have grown exponentially, should I say. They're so big and they're so ruthless and they're so violent now 
that oftentimes when you join an SNY gang, you got that inflated ego from the mainline. Well, it just got inflated even more. Big bounce house. And now you feel like you're untouchable because your gang's going to back you up. And through my seven or eight years of experience on the SNY, most people that I've seen join the SNY gangs is because of protection, to be backed up by a gang, to have the support of a gang, to be part of a gang. And that's the truth of it. And they take advantage of that and they abuse it and they use it to their own personal benefit. Like, hey, bro, nobody can touch me on these yards now because I got about 50 members that'll jump you and stab you for any reason. As long as you put hands on me and they don't know why you did, they're going to stab you everywhere you go. So, you know, people build fortresses. They build walls around themselves by joining SNY gangs. And they adopt all these dirtbag policies that are some quote unquote justified policies to get away with it. And it took me a while, trust me, you know, now that I'm away from the gang life and I'm able to think for myself and, you know, nobody encourages my way of thinking or influences my way of thinking. You really sit back and think about, I think about everything that I ever done. I was like, bro, I was a dirtbag move. When I get to my paperwork, I'll show you the paperwork and the write-ups of the people that I beat up and I'll break those stories down to you. And I'm going to show you how much of a dirtbag that I was or the dirtbag bag. I became because of the SNY policies and the way people conduct themselves on SNYs. But that's just one of those ones where that policy, you know, there's no honor on SNYs. People try to be as honorable as they can and as loyal as they can. And, you know, with a code of integrity, you know, we believe all these policies, principles, and the way we conduct ourselves on the SNYs is all a form of integrity. You know, it's a lot of dishonesty and a lot of dishonor that we choose not to believe that we're doing. But this is one of those policies that I think it makes people more violent. It causes people to be more aggressive because what's really going to happen to you if you if, if I owe you money and you, I don't pay you? You can either stab me or I can stab you. Those are the only two things that are really going to happen. And most likely we're going to survive either or encounter. But doing that, just, you know, people come home with those kind of mentalities. People come home with that kind of behavior and those kind of inflated egos where well, they don't let nobody tell them what to do because they've been getting away with a lot. You know, they bring a dirt bag mentality from prison, publish it on social media and try to justify it as well. In reality, you know, you're going to, that, that kind of dishonesty and dishonor, if you're not willing to pay your debts as a man, you're a scandalous person. You're not a man. There's no honor amongst that. It's like a man without his word. You know, and a lot of the ways that people politic in prison and people talk bad about people in prison, you know, they bring that on social media. They bring that to everyday life. You know, you know, the way people like backbite each other and talk smack about each other, but never tell to their face. Like on the prison yard, you'll see a lot of the people come from prison on social media, do it in real life, talk behind people's backs in real life. There's just a lot of dirtbag um habits in prison, both on the main line and on the SNY, that people just don't 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 lose. They don't they don't forget about it. They don't know how to let it go. And they conduct themselves in the same fashion online or in public or around their friends. And you know, that's why I like I learned a lot from prison. I don't have a lot of friends. I don't have a lot of guy friends. I don't have a lot of homegirls. I'm really, I'm really, I mean what I say when I say I stick to myself. Even when I work, my coworkers, very few words. I interact with them. I do my job. I've learned to keep to myself because, you know, you know, people are going to talk smack about each other. People are going to burn each other when it comes to money, when it comes to positions, positions of authority or positions of, you know, power and at a workforce. You know, everybody becomes scandalous in their own ways. And I just think that, you know, that's why I say this prison genre stuff is watered down because, you know, I try to be as truthful as possible when it comes to the policies and the practices in prison. But in reality, you know, a lot of people glorify them. But the truth is, there's nothing to glorify. There's nothing to brag about. There's nothing even to talk about it about it anymore because you're going to say it in a certain way to make it sound intriguing, sound so captivating to people. But in reality, everything that we've done in prison, everything, every habit, every mania, every uh, politic, if you were involved in politics, bro, you're a scandalous person. We all were. I was. I was a very scandalous person on the mainline and SNY. There is no, really no such thing as good politics and proper politics because 
if you can conduct yourselves and become a politician, somewhere along the line, you hurt somebody for a man-made law and a man-made procedure that is meaningless to anybody. Those politics don't protect nobody. These policies don't protect nobody. They're only rigged to favor those in the positions of authority, those in positions of leadership, and most importantly, those that are inspiring to become somebody where they have to step on somebody else in order to get to the top. So I wanted to bring that policy to you guys' attention because like I said, I did that policy plenty of times. There's gonna be some write-ups that I'm gonna introduce to you guys and I'll show you how you know, I adapted those same bad minds. That's why I'm glad I'm not in prison. And at some point in my YouTube channel, I'm gonna be glad that I'm not talking about prison no more because you know, it was fun for the first two years talking about prison. You know, as I did my message, I conveyed it to the youth. You know, thank God I've done my best despite the haterism. But, you know, it's like, I got to let it go. A lot of us need to let it go. And I'm ready to let it go pretty soon. And uh, just think about something different. Talk about something different because there's more to life. And there's a lot more things that we could be talking about that are far more intriguing, that are more positive and for the betterment of, you know, society, civilians, us as people, when it comes to, you know, personal growth. So I wanted to bring that policy to you guys' attention. Let me know what you guys think about that policy and, uh, with that being said, like I always say, is one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.